Okay, so let's look at some trickier examples to do in normal distribution. And what we're going to look at now is working out quantiles or k values. So what we're going to do is work backwards, really. Um, so here's an example with notation, then we'll look at some worded examples in a moment. So we have that some continuous measurement, maybe height or weight or whatever, is normally distributed with a mean of 38.7 and a standard deviation 8.2. Illustrate with a sketch and find k such that the probability of this measurement being less than or equal to k is 0.9. Right, so let's do this first one here. So we have our normal distribution curve like this. And basically what it's asking us to do is work out a particular value on our x-axis. Okay, so maybe this is height. So this is k. Oops. Actually, let me actually, let's see. Well, we have 0.9, so it's going to be somewhere over here. So there's some value on our x-axis, 0.9. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, k. Where if we picked one person at random, then the probability that they're less than or equal to this particular value is 0.9 so we have that 90 percent of the population is below this particular value again well 0.9 as percentage is 90 percent so 90 percent of the population is below this particular value so what is that number here so what is x got to be less than or equal to the calculator does that for well, works it out for us so let's go do that then some menu probability distribution and we want the third one, inverse normal, because we're sort of working backwards, really. All right, first of all, it asks us for the area. So the area, we want to be 0 0.9, okay? That's what it's telling us here. We want it to be 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 is that. And then it's asking us for the mean and the standard deviation. Well, the mean is 38.7. And the standard deviation, remember, it's just this number here. It's... 8.2 and press OK. So what do we have? 49.2. Okay, so 49.2. That means if the measurement x, whether it's height or weight, is less than uh, less than or equal to 49.2, the probability of that happening is 0 0.9. Okay? Right, so we kind of work backwards from the examples we were looking at in the previous clip where in the previous clip, they told us what this k value is and they asked us for what the probability was. This is sort of working backwards because they're telling us what the probability is, but what's the actual value on our x axis going to be? Right, the next question, well, we have to be careful because the calculator only has one way of solving the problem. So it's telling us this the probability that x is greater than or equal to some value is 0.9, so 0 point, sorry, 0.8. 0 0.8 as a percentage is 80%. So if we make a sketch of this, so we do our horizontal axis and our normal distribution curve like so. Right, now there is some value k and the probability of picking one person at random and it being bigger than this particular value is 0.8 or 80% uh, of the population is bigger than this particular value. So it must be somewhere down here. That's where k is going to be. And 80% of the population is this side of it, okay? Greater than or equal to this number. Okay, greater than or equal to that particular number. So the 80% is that side. But the thing about the calculator is this it cannot solve it if you're looking at the right hand side of a particular value. It can only look at it, it can only solve it, sorry, if it's to do with the left hand side. Right, but the left hand side, we know that if well if 80% on is on this side, well that means 20% is gotta be there. Right, and 20% as a decimal is 0 0.2. So we're gonna solve that on the calculator. So menu, probability, distributions, and inverse. Now the area, instead of putting in 0 0.8, remember the calculator can only solve it if it's a less than or equal to sign or below that particular value but it's the same you know it's going to give us the actual answer anyway 80 percent below 20 percent 80 percent above sorry 20 percent below so the area is 0.2 as a decimal that's 20 percent and what was the mean again 38.7 and the standard deviation was 8.2 those are the same so we press enter 
31.7, well, 31.8, right, so K has got to be 31.8, that means the probability that if you chose, uh, chose one person at random that they'll be bigger than 31.8, uh, the answer is 0 0.8, okay, well, that's the, the answer, sorry, is, is 31.8, but that's the particular value where 80% of the population is above that particular value and 20% is below. But remember, if there's one th important thing is that it can't solve it if it's above, it can only solve it if it's below. So 80% above, that means 20% below, and that's what you need to type in onto your calculator, that as a decimal. All right, let's look at some worded, uh, slightly worded examples to do with this, okay? So here's um, a question to do with exam results, seems convenient. And this is kind of like what exam boards do, really. They look at the distribution of everyone, all the students, and they make great boundaries on, and they decide basically how, what percentage of the population they want to give A's to and so on. So here's a typical example. Students of class X sat a physics test. The average score is 46. So the wording saying average score, well, that means mu. The mean is 46. The standard deviation is 25, so sigma is 25, get those two pieces of information down first. The teacher decides to award an A to the top 7% of students in the class. Assuming that the score is normally distributed, find the lowest score that would achieve an A. So the normal distribution curve looks like this. And we have our scores running along the bottom. So we're looking at the top 7%. So if you get above this particular value, K, we want 7% of people above this value to get an A, right? So what is that number here? What score do you need to get to get an A on this particular exam? Right, so what we're really solving is this probability of the scores being greater than or equal to some value being, well, what 7% is decibel? 0.07. But remember, the calculator cannot solve this. 7% here, that means we must have, well, what, what percentage do we have here? Well, we're 93% below that, right? Okay, so what we're going to solve is probability of being less than or equal to this particular value equaling 93%, or 0.93 is a decimal. Let's go ahead and work that out. Menu, probability distributions, inverse, right, we want the area to be 0.93, okay, 7% above means 93% below, okay, the mean, the average score is 46, and the standard deviation is 25, let's enter that, right, what do we have, what number do we have, 82.8, so this value here is 82 Right, but you can't obviously get 82.9 marks in a test, so we need to change it to the nearest whole number. Well, it's closer to 83. So that means if you get 83 marks above, then you've got an A, and that's and that's going to guarantee that. Well, that's going to help. That's help going to help ensure that 7% of your students get an A. All right. So 83 marks and above means you're going to get an A, and that's going to be 7%. 7% of your class is going to get an A, right? Okay, that's one typical example. Let's look at one more. Okay, the volumes of cool drinks in bottles filled by a machine are normally distributed with a mean of 503 milliliters and a standard deviation of 0.5 milliliters, right? Um, this is what a lot of manufacturers do. They kind of um, look at their production line and make various measurements and if a bottle comes along the production line and it's out of some parameter they throw it away and this is what they're going to do here one percent of the bottles are rejected because they are underfilled and two percent are rejected because they are overfilled otherwise they are kept so the middle percentage is kept what range of volumes is in the bottles that are kept right let's go and work this out let me draw, it's always good to draw a normal distribution here for this. Let's get that drawn first of all, right. 1% is underfilled. That means there must be some value here. 
And if it's below that value, this is the 1%, which are going to be underfilled. Okay, 1% is a decimal of 0 0.01. So if it's below this particular value, that means it's going to be rejected, right? So let's work out that lower parameter, that lower bound, first of all. because That's easy to do, because we're looking for probability that it's less than or equal to some value being 0 0.01. You go to menu, probability, distributions, inverse, right, we want it to be 0 0.01 is the area. And what was this standard deviation? Oh, we should make sure that they're in the same measurement, so they could be a bit crafty and not do that for us. So milliliters, milliliters, that's okay, so 503 and 0 0.5 in there. Okay, 0, so 501.8, 501.8. Right, so if a bottle comes down your production line and you measure the volume and the volume is below this 501.8, that means you've got to throw it away, okay, because it's underfilled, okay? Right, now let's draw another normal distribution curve and let's look at the, uh, the overfill, which is 2%. Okay, right, so your bottle comes down the line and there's a particular value, okay? And if, it's a, if the volume is above this value, then the bottle is chucked away. And we're saying that 2% of the bottles that are above this value are going to be chucked away. So what is that number here? So we're looking for the probability that it's greater than or equal to this value being 0 0.02, which is what it is as a decimal, 2% uh, as a decimal. But remember, your calculator cannot solve for above a particular value. You can only do it for below a particular value. So if we have... 2% above, that means we have 98% below. Right, and let's solve this particular one, less than or equal to some value k being 0 0.98. So go to menu, prob, distribution, inverse normal, right, we want it to be 0 0.98. Right, the mu was 503 and that was 0 0.5. Press enter on that. Right, what do we have? 504.02. Well, let's just say 504. So your bottle comes along, and if it's above this volume of 504, it's thrown away. But the question is this. It's saying to you, what um, what range of volumes is, the, is in the bottles that are kept? Well, that means if it's below 504, and above, well let's round that to 502, 502, that means they're kept. So if a bottle comes along is anywhere between these two values, or equal, well, I think it's okay to say they're equal to these two values, then you keep them. But above that, or below this one, then you throw it away. And this is a this is the last type of problem you're going to get on normal distribution. And again, calculator does all the hard work for you.